in an absolute panic over new polling showing Nikki Haley tied with Donald Trump. Donald Trump is now doing daily rallies in New Hampshire. Last night's rally was in Atkinson, New Hampshire. As we looked at earlier in the show, he had Vivek Ramaswamy come up and uh, kiss the ring and say this guy is great and endorse him and the entire thing. Trump also slurred his way through allegations that Biden is in cognitive decline and also on drugs. Interesting allegations for Trump to be making. I was actually going to cover this one live. It was scheduled for 5 p.m. It was then announced that Donald Trump would be about two hours late. And, and at that point, I had to bail. And it doesn't seem like I missed too, too much. But there were some relevant moments here, an incredibly dangerous moment. And I have to remind you once again, believe these people when they tell us what they're going to try to do. Trump calls for CNN and NBC to have their licenses revoked. He doesn't even know if they have licenses, but if they do to take them away because they didn't air his entire victory speech in Iowa. This is the sort of adversarial and downright autocratic dictatorial relationship that Trump wants to have with media outlets. It must be full and complete loyalty or he will try to get you pulled off the air. He's telling us he'll be a dictator, folks. Let's listen to the guy. Because they love their country. But we were talking about a show and how corrupt the press is. And last night, it was amazing. NBC and CNN refused to air my victory speech. Think of it. Because they are crooked, they're dishonest, and frankly, they should have their licenses or whatever they have taken away. They put on... They put on Nikki Haley. She came in third, a distant third, like I mean a distant third. And they put on Ron DeSanctimonious, who came in a boring second. This is yet another attack. And this isn't the first time he talked about pulling Comcast off. I mean, it, it, this this has been a theme of this camp campaign, much more so than what we saw during his uh, presidency, which was bad enough, by the way. Respect. If we want to talk about the pillars of our democracy, what is the country based on the Constitution, which they claim to love and almost see as a sacred text, freedom of the press, respect for a free press is very high on the list of values that supposedly we are supposed to uh, respect and hold dear in this country. And he's saying they should have their licenses revoked because they opted not to carry his victory speech from one primary in the state of Iowa or a caucus during the 2024 Republican primary. We've just got to believe him. And even if your view is, well, he probably won't be able to get their licenses taken away because he'll go to the FCC and the FCC will say, sir, that's not legal. There's no reason to do that. Do you still want someone whose instinct is to try to silence media outlets he doesn't like? to be president of the United States. If the answer is yes, then I think you found the guy. Trump made fun of Joe Biden's cognitive state, including claiming that Joe Biden gets shots of stimulants before doing speeches while slurring his way through that explanation and having his fair share of cognitive beauties himself. It's really something else that this is the theme and continuing to insist Biden is on drugs. Take a look at this. Take a listen to this. They're very short, you know, because you run out of uh, octane, you know. <laughs> so if you're only listening there, Trump talks about running out of octane and he does a sort of injection hand gesture into his shoulder. Again, the idea is Biden is juiced for his speeches, which is funny only because that's the rumor about Trump that Trump is the one who likes stimulants. And we've talked about upper Trump and downer Trump, depending on his demeanor. Anyway, here is the allegation once again. You run out. You ever notice he starts off for MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. Oh, you're going to get MAGA. By the end of the speech, he's like, oh, they say, get him off the stage. He needs another. Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to the cocaine? Whatever happened to whatever the hell it was that they had in the White House a couple of weeks. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Trump very concerned about Joe Biden's cognitive state. 
and believes Joe Biden is doing drugs to get through speeches, maybe up to and including cocaine. Totally reasonable things to be saying, right? Donald Trump bemoaned that he had to leave the White House when he lost. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Despite losing, it would have been great to be able to stay there. But Trump says we had to leave. It's crazy. But we had to follow the law, which is funny because he didn't follow the law. That's why he's the subject of 91 criminal indictments. Take a look at this. Like, oi, and then I get in and it goes. Psh. Sorry, four indictments, 91 felonies. We were doing much more than they were doing. But when I left, uh, which was ridiculous that we had to leave, but we had to leave. We have to follow the laws of our land. But what are ridiculous. Is it amazing? They don't investigate the people that cheated in the election. They investigate the people that understand they cheated and go after <laughs> them, but they don't like. Yeah, um, you know, it's funny. Trump says it's so crazy that we had to leave. But at the end of the day, you have to follow the law, except he didn't follow the law. He attempted a coup. He incited an insurrection. He uh, orchestrated. He conspired to orchestrate slates of fake electors attempting to send Republican electors to steal electoral votes, even in states where Joe Biden had won and Democratic electors should be going in order to declare their state's electoral votes for Joe Biden. None of that is following the law. Following the law would be I made 63 legal attempts. None of them were found to be worthy or meritorious, either on the facts or on standing. And I've exhausted every legal means. So that means I now follow the law by not doing any of this other stuff, not inciting an insurrection, not strong arming elected officials in Georgia and other states to find votes that I need. Following the law would be I am now going to leave without doing any of those things. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. So the idea that ultimately, well, listen, I just had to follow the law. Even that isn't true. And then lastly, here is how much Trump uh, you know, respects the voters. Right. Trump is warning people that a whole bunch of independent voters will be supporting Nikki Haley in the New Hampshire primary because independents are allowed to participate in primaries in New Hampshire. This is the law. Remember, he supports the law. He bemoans that independent voters will support Nikki Haley and says that's not what the Republican Party is about. It's not. I thought the Republican Party was the big tent party. We welcome everybody. We welcome independents. We welcome Democrats, whoever wants to vote. Apparently not when they plan to vote for somebody else. The only way to stop the Biden lunatics and radical leftists is trying to they're trying to cancel out your votes. They want to cancel out your votes. That's what they're doing with Haley. They love Haley because they're going to load it up with Democrats. They're not going to win anyway. They're not going to win anyway. They're not even close, but they're going to load it up with Democrats and independents and which is all, of course, completely legal and allowed. This is the system New Hampshire has. That's not what the Republican Party is about. We love Democrats that want to vote for us and we love independents, especially that want to vote for us. But it's not what the party is about. But the independents that want to vote for Trump, we love the independents and Democrats that plan to vote for Haley. That's not what the Republican Party is about. Now, this is this is the way the election works. And the theme with Trump is if anything about the way our elections are run is inconvenient, then you attack it as a bad thing. New Hampshire has open primaries. Voters are not required to be affiliated with either or any political party to participate in the primary election. Registered voters who are independents can vote in either primary, but you have to declare a party affiliation at the polling place on the day of the primary, and then you can change back to unaffiliated right after voting. And the idea is it's a more flexible system. It increases participation for voters who don't want to be tied to a specific party. It not every state does this. But at least the overt reasons for New Hampshire doing it all seem like good things, increasing participation, making things more flexible. If you're unaffiliated, but you find that you are more drawn to a Democratic or a Republican candidate, you can show up and vote in either primary. These are all, at least in theory, good things. Trump hates all of it. The only part that's OK is that some independents will be voting for him. Attacking me just in this one speech, OK? bemoaning that he had to leave the White House even though he lost, 
wrongly claiming he followed the law. He attempted to break it and allegedly did break it 91 different times, uh, insisting that CNN and NBC should have their licenses revoked because they didn't cover his speech in Iowa and here bemoaning the fact that there are people who are going to vote for other candidates, including independents, even though that's the system that New Hampshire has determined is the best system for them. This is just one speech. OK, believe him when he shows us his anti democratic leanings. If you could use a little help meeting your weight loss goal for 2024, give our sponsor PhD Weight Loss a call. They've been doing some amazing things for people. They make the weight loss journey simple. They do one on one coaching with their certified team of compassionate, encouraging dietitians. PhD Weight Loss helps real people get results through lifestyle modification based on protocols from successful clinical trials. You get an initial consultation. You review your history, your lifestyle, your go your goals. You create a customized plan of action. It includes food and lifestyle. And then their team of dietitians and counselors are at your disposal every step of the way. If weight loss is something you're working on, check out PhD weight loss. No severe calorie restriction, no medications, pills or supplements, unsustainable exercise routines, none of that stuff. PhD weight loss has an approach that focuses on behavioral change, nutrition education, and they take an overarching holistic approach to your body and habits. You can learn more about PhD weight loss at myphdweightloss.com, then call for a consultation using the phone number I'm showing here and mention the David Pakman show to get a week of the program totally free. The link is down below.